Hello, this is Mike Gay from Scratch. Welcome to a completely random look at Gravit.io. I'll explain exactly what that is in a second, but basically it's a program I just stumbled upon and I thought I should share it with you. Um, I'm not a master at this program. I literally just found it and it's somewhat ironic because I just finished putting together that resource guide basically for uh, free game dev resources and this one should have made the list but I was completely unaware of it. Now what led me down this path is I was looking for vector graphics programs and this is an area where there aren't a ton of options especially when it comes to free. Basically there is Inkscape. That's the free option period. And then on top of that, you've got a couple of affordable options. You've got the Sublime, uh, used to be called iDraw, now it's called Graphics, available on uh, Apple products, basically iPad and Mac OS. And it's a great package, available for a really nice price, uh, but sadly not available on Windows. And then you get into the uh, more expensive packages. You have Adobe Illustrator, you have uh, Flash, uh, Fireworks to a certain degree, um, Corel, draw um, and that's about it so vector graphics packages aren't really as common as um, I'd like them to be which is a shame because I use them actually to do all of my title graphics um, I use them to do UI work in games etc they're very important to get down and um, handle and this is an example of a graphic versus a raster or a bitmap image you see the guy on the left and the guy on the right the guy on the right is drawn with vectors uh, basically it's a mathematical equation saying here's how this shape is drawn whereas the guy on the left the raster image is drawn using pixels so basically it's at this location draw this color at this location draw this color at this location draw this color and the comparison basically bit is um, your art and drawing style is much different it's much more fluid working with pixels but when you draw with shapes like this with vector as you can see when you scale it in you don't get the jaggies it doesn't need anti-aliasing it's very crisp at every resolution and that's where vector graphics really shine so that's why I found this guy and it's nice it's Gravit uh, as you probably guessed from the title image Gravit.io and it's just a website and a lot of times I don't like web-based applications at all um, and it's completely free right now I don't know uh, how that's going to change um, you need to log in uh, I am not a robot, and why am I not logging in? Um, okay, one second. All right, I found a bit of a flaw with it. Um, I have to use this login here instead, and then it fills out the form correctly. That was very confusing. Uh, so anyways, you gotta sign up username. That's about it. They haven't spammed me. They haven't actually sent me any email at all, I think other than the uh, verification email that, um, you get right off the hop. Uh, but this is Gravit. It's very, very, very straightforward and simple. Oh, I guess this is how they're gonna make money off the markets. Uh, but you can start with, so create a design. Uh, you can start with one of their templates, uh, various sizes and shapes down here uh, with various previews or various um, formats. Or we just go ahead and create our own. So I'm gonna create an, actually let's do 600 by 300. And being vectors, this doesn't really matter that much because you can scale it up or down infinitely. Uh, but here is the application, it's very straightforward. Now, if you've never worked with vectors before, it is a bit of a learning curve to get used to it. Uh, but you you come in here, you can come in here, create various different shapes. So for example, I could use the pen tool and draw freehand, close it off like that. I uh, would come down here, we could, oops, so show that fill, make it red on the inside. And that's, that's it. That, that's how easy it is. Now what you do is you basically layer on top of each other to add depth, to add um, substance, etc. And way beyond the scope of here. I'm not going to be teaching vector graphics in this particular example. Uh, but you can get the premise of how it works. You basically build up compound shapes. You can even go one step further so I could create another shape, for example, an ellipse. And we'll bring it in here. And now I can go up here, select, select the first one, select the second one. And now we can do things such as... Um, where did you go? All right, modify, create compound shape. Oops, come on, you, you, modify, create compound shapes, and we can do, uh, we'll do a subtraction. So there you can see how you can refine and, and make shapes more um, exact, precise, compound. And then what you often do is you'd layer another shape over top of this to provide like a shadowing layer. Um, you've got various effects that you could do over here. So we could go ahead and add an effect to it. So we could add a blur, a warp, uh, inner glow, outer glow. So we'll do an inner glow in this particular case. Uh, color of the inner glow is bright yellow. Make it big, 
And there you can see the end result. And that is, in essence, vector graphics. There's a lot more to it, obviously. Um, we've got nice controls here for laying out. We've got layer controls over here. Um, so we've got the different um, pieces that went together to make this guy you can see uh, coming up. Um, it is a different approach to uh, working in graphics. If you're working with uh, bitmap pixels, sorry, if you're working with pixels only, that's your background, you're going to have a learning curve coming to vectors. But when it comes to things like uh, text, uh, buttons, etc., it's it's a godsend. So you could come in here, for example, we need to make a simple button, come down here, make it a rectangle. Now we could modify it so the corners were made different. Uh, what do you do? Yeah, so we could round off the corners like so. I uh, change our background, make it darker like so. And add a bit of an effect so that we have like that. And then we come up here, create our text. My button click me. And you see our text settings are over here, so we can obviously it might meet so let's change you up to 60. Oops, let's not change you to 60. Let's go with 40 instead. Uh, we will center the text. So this is where they really shine, is your text manipulation. And I find a lot of times working with text um, in paint.net or Photoshop, etc., is not a fun experience. So this does definitely make it easier. Now we can actually go ahead with the text now. We'll do an outer glow on our text. And let's do a transform. Actually, I shouldn't have to. I should be able to just move it. All right. We'll center it within our parent shape. And there, done. You've created a text button. And that's where I love vector graphics for doing, again, UI work, for doing um, web page design. Uh, but you can also definitely use it for game graphics. A lot of games out there are using a more vectorly look. And the really nice part about vectors then is for, um, say, iPad. There's the iPad, and then there's the iPad with Retina. Same with Mac OS, Mac OS with Retina. And now in the Windows world, you're seeing high DPI displays coming more and more often. And this is where pixel graphics fall on their face. Unless you're going for that chunky A bit look the more you scale up pixels the worse they look to a certain degree you do get those blocky jaggy kind of image well with the vector you can easily if you're creating pixel versions no problem save it in two different resolutions and you can have your uh you know at x2 version and your your other version or if you're working directly in vectors you're just good to go and your game will automatically scale um so if you haven't worked with vectors, I do recommend you checking it out. If you have worked with vectors, then you should immediately know what all of this stuff is, how all these things work. Um, it's a lot more straightforward UI-wise, in my humble opinion, than um, Inkscape. I, I struggle so badly with Inkscape's UI. This is going to be my go-to tool on Windows for doing this kind of work. It's it's great. It's, it's a cool package. It works very well. Uh, and then when you're done, you can actually go ahead and save it. Uh, no problem. Saved button, and now it's saved. So log back in, it will be available there. Uh, we can go ahead, I believe we can, yeah, we can also do an export, and we can bring it down as PNG, JPEG, SVG, or a PDF file. Uh, SVG basic, basically being the standard vector graphics um, format, so you'll be able to bring that guy into uh, Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, probably Flash, uh, Inkscape, etc and that'll still be a vector. Uh, PDF graphics also will be vectorized, but won't be supported by as many uh, packages. And then of course, your PNG and JPEG are your two standard um, bitmap raster formats. And that's it, that's that's Gravit. It's a very straightforward, but very powerful tool that's completely free to use, works in your browser. Uh, as you saw from what I've done so far, it's, it's plenty fast. I have no issues there. Uh, yeah, I... I highly recommend that uh, you check this guy out. It's a, it's a cool tool. Um, if you're looking for a vector graphics tool, I would recommend checking this guy out. Coincidentally, if you are on Mac or you have an iPad, I also do recommend checking out um, Autodesk's graphics. It's a very cool package available for a very reasonable price. But on Windows, this is going to be my go-to. I'm very impressed by it. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a quick video. It's just something I found and I thought I would share. And I hope you did like this. And if you did do, please click like. And if you like this kind of stuff, uh, do subscribe. It's generally a little bit more uh, game development focused around here. Uh, this is more of a generalist art tool, but it's a cool enough one, a free enough one, and a capable enough one. I felt that I should share it. So uh, this is Gravit, available at uh, G-A-R-V-I-T.io. Hope you enjoyed that. See you all later.